them this story after retrieving video surveillance recording from other persons in the neighborhood and also from the CCTV camera in the area. Last week, the Ghana Police Force issued a wanted bulletin for 29-year-old Akibo uh, Bramel, who had been identified as one of the three men who abducted Fiko from the parking lot of the Griffin Mall. The wanted man's last known address has been given as Belay Springs in Joshua. The names of the pol two police officers are to be charged for the abduction and robbery uh, are still to be released by the guy. Looking at the environment and there really was no, no one had a philosophy that excited me. Um, as a young person, I really did not want to be drawn into the same old, same old. I knew then even before oil that Guyana had so much potential, so much we could do. And I think I was just very, um, in a kind of a way, maybe I was an upstart because I kept thinking, I ain't waiting my whole life for Guyana to realize this potential. Let's get up and go. And I was very, we were very fortunate that there were so many like-minded people around. You know, Onyx, when we went to, we were formed in October of... Uh, somewhere in Providence, this area is Providence. And, you know, it have a lot of houses. So, you know, so the people in Providence, I'm doing your road, okay? I'm doing your fucking road. And I'm gonna put my name on a dog pen here. You guys are gonna get it right. So, you know, I got proper material. Yes, you know, the material is good, you know? So from that hand, all the way to that hand, it's very, very deep over there. You guys know, right? So the job is coming now. I gotta go to the gardens now, you know what I'm saying? You guys that are looking for a job, you need to send me your application. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. The Alliance for Change on Tuesday celebrated its 19th anniversary with their traditional flag raising ceremony held at the party's Kitty Georgetown headquarters. In a press release, the AFC said leaders, members, and supporters reflected on the early days when the party's three founding members, Sheila Holder, Tim Raj Ranjitin, and Raphael Trotman, took the bold step to form the movement and challenge Guyana's long established two party political structure. Today, the AFC once again demonstrated that it is here to stay recognizing the strides made and recommitting to its founding principle of the transformation of Guyana for the benefit of all her citizens and the end to racial politics, the release stated. Since its formation on October 29, 2005, the Alliance for Change said it has consistently promoted that Guyana's advancement is intertwined with its ability to unleash the true potential of our people. In recent years under the current PPP government, we have vehemently spoken out against the high cost of living facing Guyanese, the out-of-control massive levels of corruption in the award of contracts, and the subjective and unequal allocation of the nation's bountiful resources to the PPP's community of friends, family, and favorites. It may help. And <laughs> Rafa said to me, yeah, 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 we need people like you to come on board in this movement. And I said, well, Okay, I suppose I could help. He said, well, you know, especially in the marketing and the media part, which was my area. Yes. So I said, okay, you know, let me, uh, I said, yeah, man, I, you know, give me a call if you need any help. If that was the Friday night, the Monday I got a call from Raphael. And he said to me, look, we're having a meeting. Would you come? So I went to this meeting. In fact, the meeting was at Christopher Ram's uh, office because he was very involved in the party then. Mm -hmm. and i attended about four three or four meetings and i was supposed to be part of this mar marketing team very interested in the discussion but after the fourth meeting i said to, to rafael uh is there anybody else in this marketing team because i only see it <laughs> myself and he said yeah guess what you are the marketing team and the rest <laughs> is three onyx that's how i wow. how i started i wanted to know at the time were you yourself and um, Sheila, were you like the only women that were at the head of the team at the time or were there other women that stepped up to the plate? There were many women that stepped up to the plate. Of course, Nicola Trotman, you know, we have to acknowledge that a lot of the early discussions 
I think took place in her kitchen. Um, <laughs> you know, we had um, quite a few of our long lasting uh, members. Raffle's sister, Nande, was very involved. Uh, members of Kemraj's family. We had a very strong, we started off with a very strong uh, women's group. And as you know, it developed into Women for Change. And uh, we've had uh, members that have been with us, uh, you know, for a very long time. So I'm proud of that fact. Sheila really became my mentor. Sheila was involved a bit in politics because she had represented the WPA and had been in Parliament. Um, politics was a totally new thing for me, so to speak. And, you know, the, the push for me was when Raphael said, you know, we can't do this alone. And I thought to myself, why is it I want to be like everybody else and have somebody else participate and fix and get involved? And I kind of just want to sit in the corner safe and sound. And it was after Sheila's passing. The sad thing is, Onyx, I will admit, I was terrified of publicly acknowledging I was a member of the AFC just because I knew the politics of the day. And I was very worried about the victimization that would, my company would face and my businesses. So I hid in the background. I would organize the press releases, do all kinds of things, but never step forward. And it was Sheila that said to me one day, you know, if you believe in this, why don't you stand up and claim that this is what you believe in? And uh, here I am. All right. All right. One more question before I go on to the other panelists, um, Kathy. At the time when you started the party, where was your head? Where was the party? And where, where had you seen yourself probably 19 years ago? And do you think you would have still been here today? with the Alliance for Change? I I had never been a member of any political party. I was very, very careful about looking at the environment and there really was no, no one had a philosophy that excited me. Um, as a young person, I really did not want to be drawn into the same old, same old. I knew then even before oil that Guyana had so much potential, so much we could do. And I think I was just very, um, in a kind of a way, maybe I was an upstart because I kept thinking, I ain't waiting my whole life for Guyana to realize this potential. Let's get up and go. And I was very, we were very fortunate that there were so many like-minded people around. You know, Onyx, when we went to, we were formed in October of uh, 2005. And by 2006, there was an, an election. And I remember us saying... Do, we haven't been around for a long time. It isn't even a year. Should we run? But we decided we were going to run just for the experience. And the fact that then on our first outing, we got six seats. Of course, they only ever gave us five. Right. But, awesome. Right. So um, imagine that that meant that there was a substantial amount of Guyanese um, that felt that identified with this new political party. And, 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 you know, were willing to vote for us. Having yeah. that kind of, um, you know, support, we could only work and build on it. It's been challenging, but I wouldn't change it for the world. And I just hope we can really continue. We've been battered. We've been bruised. We're the ones that everybody cusses up. But guess what? 19 years later, we are that young adult We've taken our place, and I think the political landscape is better for having an AFC in it. Nice, nice. Um, Kati, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Um, but before we go, any final words to our listening public, to the citizenry, as we head into you know, this new change that we all want to see in 2025? You know, um, it's difficult to take a decision to get involved in in politics. I was very lucky that both my husband and my father were very instrumental. But I want to just leave a thought that my dad used to share with me. Um, he would always say, stop complaining. 
Stop complaining about all that is wrong. Get up and try and do something about it. If you do nothing, you are where you are or things could be worse. If you step forward and try to change it, who knows what difference you could make. And really, every single person can make a difference in some small or in some big way. Thank you so much, Kati. It was a pleasure, like I said, speaking with you. And we do hope that, well, not hope, we know 2025 will be a year of change. Absolutely. Onyx, thank you. Um, I'm Sarif Khan, his wife, Yoneka Ramjeet, and their infant daughter were severely burned with hot oil during a heated altercation involving Khan's brother last Wednesday. The ordeal began when Yoneka and Sarif returned home from a nearby shop. As they approached their residence, a shared family yard, they spotted Khan's brother enjoying drinks with two men on the front veranda, one of whom was a longtime friend reportedly known to be gay. Yoneka recounted how her husband and his brother had exchanged playful banter with the friend earlier in the day. However, what seemed like harmless teasing quickly spiraled into chaos. After making what he considered a light-hearted joke, Sarif and Yoneka retreated to their home at the back of the yard. The friend, feeling offended, reported the joke to Khan's brother, igniting a series of escalating arguments throughout the evening. Hilniko, caught in the crossfire, later ventured out to retrieve some cooking supplies. On her way back, she was taken aback to find the friend urinating on the pathway leading to their home. I told him that he can't pee there, cause that is where we just gotta walk, she explained, hoping to de-escalate tensions. Upon returning home, Yonika shared the incident with Sari. But the situation took a turn for the worse when the friend once again complained to Khan's brother, who retaliated by cutting off their electricity. Though the power was restored shortly after, it only added fuel to the fire. When the lights went out again, Sarif went to investigate, sparking yet another heated confrontation with his brother. Things took a violent turn when Khan's brother's wife joined the fray, attacking Sarif with a piece of wood. In an escalation, the brother stormed into the kitchen, returned with hot oil, and hurled it at the family. After he throw the hot oil, me run and start holler for my husband that the baby get burned, Yoneka recalled, her voice filled with distress. APNU plus AFC Member of Parliament Ganesh Mahipal yesterday painted a grim picture of the Guyana Police Force, GPF, alleging that it has devolved into a national security risk under the governance of the People's Progressive Party. His statement delivered yesterday at the PNCR's press conference came amidst growing public concern over the integrity and effectiveness of the police force, which Mahipal claims has been compromised by criminal activities at high levels. Recent reports have surfaced that raise alarms about the conduct of senior police officials. According to Mahipal, top officers are allegedly involved in various crimes, with the GPF reportedly serving as a source for tip-offs and cover-ups that benefit criminals. He criticized the government for failing to address these issues, asserting that both local and foreign security agencies are now hesitant to collaborate with the GPF. Two policemen will face criminal charges for their alleged involvement in robbing and abducting a man from the Giftland car park, Liliendal, Georgetown, the Guyana police force said on Tuesday. The GPF, in response to a request for an update on the abduction case, stated, The DPP, Director of Public Prosecution, Shalimar Ali Hack SC, has advised criminal charges against two serving members of the GPF. Investigators told this newspaper that the policemen in question allegedly conspired to abduct and rob Kevin Fitku, a 31-year-old operations supervisor attached to Aurora Gold Mining Inc. On Thursday, October 10, three gunmen posing as police ranks reportedly took $9.5 million in cash from Fitku. Kayator News had contacted Fitku and he disclosed that the alleged imposters returned the following day in a police car demanding more cash. He reportedly gave them $40,000 all he had left for them to leave. And here what this story says. The Director of Public Prosecutions has advised that criminal charges be laid against two serving members of the Guyana Police Force over the abduction and robbery of a supervisor at a gold mining company from the parking lot of Giffland Mall just over two weeks ago. One of the policemen to be charged is believed to be the driver of a senior police officer. The entire incident was caught on camera. The victim, Kevin Fitkal, who is, who is originally from Linden but lives in Providence, told investigators that he was walking, uh, he was taking his vehicle 
to the Wash Bay close to the mall parking lot on, on the 10th of October. When three men approached him, <coughs> excuse me, and identified themselves as police officers. The man said the three men never provided him with any form of identification. And after he, initial, he initially refused the request to get out of his vehicle, he was forced out by the men and, and cuffed. He said two of the three men were armed with guns and he was dumped into the back seat of a great Toyota Primo car and they sped off from the Giftland parking lot. Investigators said the car was found to be registered to a police officer. The victim told stole news source that after he was abducted, the man demanded money from him. He explained that he did not have any money on him, and as they continued to threaten him with their guns, he eventually told them that he had money at home from his family's trucking business. Fikau said the man drove him to his home and forced him to hand over 9.5 million um, in cash that was in the house. He then he said the man disconnected his surveillance camera, the camera recorder, and left with it, promising that they would return the next day. Fitao said to his surprise, the man kept their promise and returned to his home the following day. But this time it was in a blue, it was in a blue and white car belonging to the Guyana police force. He said the man demanded more money from him and also questioned him about valuables before leaving the house. Fikau said the following morning he visited the Providence Police Station and filed an official complaint after realizing that the robbers really were police officers. The police investigators were able to confirm his story after retrieving... Let me read that back. The police investigators were able to confirm his story after retrieving video surveillance recording from other persons in the neighborhood and also from the CCTV camera in the area. Last week, the Guyana Police Force issued a wanted bulletin for 29-year-old Akibu uh, Bramel, who had been identified as one of the three men who abducted Fikau from the parking lot of the Gifflin Mall. The wanted man's last known address has been given as Belay Springs in Joshua. The names of the po two police officers are to be charged for the abduction and robbery uh, are still to be released by the, Guyana, by the force, but they are expected in court soon more and more this thing is so um well only embarrassing it's not only embarrassing because you can only embarrass if you get shame i would suspect that people like um gail Teixeira who wrote to say let me let me read what she said who wrote to say that the police force is about the best police force in the in the caribbean and, and all of that she and this man um I'm gonna, let me read this is what is going on don't forget not so long ago you had an incident where it was said that two Men in police uniform robbed the um, manager of token distributions of $10 million um, at GBTI. For those of you who know, GBTI in Young Street, Young and I Street, just opposite Pegasus Hotel, is just, is bar it borders the police force headquarters. And the man reported that he went there to deposit $10 million. And these two men rode up. He said that when he saw the people in uniform, he wasn't concerned because he says policemen. And then they proceeded to rob him of this $10 million he had, and he went away. Uniform. The police then issued a statement to say later on that one of the men was arrested. Up to now, I don't think they say if the man who was arrested or anyone else, because I don't know um, they uh, apprehended the other one, were in fact policemen. They did not say what they came out with. It was one of those mendacious statements to say um, that the man said he couldn't identify. The man said, no, he came back and said, no. I clearly said that the men who robbed me were dressed in police uniform. That doesn't mean they're policemen, but they were dressed in police uniform, the man said so. And here what Gail Cicero said to um, Aubrey Norton, the, the, minor, the, the leader of the opposition, in this exchange of letters, as the government decided that they want to um, appoint Ikin as the commissioner of police. And, you know, I, I have said, either want to appoint him, even though it is unconstitutional, Yes, pass the retirement date, go in and appoint him. But don't tell people all this nonsense. Like, for example, Gabe Thierry said, I am to inform you, this is the last paragraph of the letter to Mr. Norton. I am to inform you that in the circumstances, having considered your contentions and upon what and upon weighing same against the accomplishments 
of the Ghana Police Force under the superintendents of Mr. Ikin, including the significant decrease in serious crimes, um, improved public confidence in the force, the overall enhanced performance of the force, and in particular, the performance of Mr. Ikin, His Excellency has concluded that it is in the public interest and in the interest of national security that Mr. Ikin be appointed police commissioner. That is what Gail Tishere wrote to the leader of the opposition, uh, leader of the opposition said. All this is going on. And this is, even while this investigation into Brutus was going on, you know, now we hear that Brutus um, he faced, he answered to 30 charges last Thursday, and they said he got 210 more of you are left to believe. And that is what you're saying. And then you get a man who wrote a letter and to say, um, this is, um, when was this? The 9th of October in the letter column. I think it would have been Kaichur News. I'm not sure. But he says, um, he, he was attacking GHK Lal, who talk about what is going on in the force. And here what the man says, he signs his name as Shorin Cranon. He said, objectivity allows for a clear thought in writing. Mr. Lal and others are reminded that, uh, um, that the message Mr. Ikin has been conveying to his officers and other subordinates have never been unorthodox. He has, to the best of my knowledge, promoted the part of best practices for the organization. He has repeatedly pledged to make Ghana, the Ghana police force the best in the Caribbean and has demonstrated this ambitious desire in his presentations when representing the force at engagement overseas. And here the kicker, he said, it is my humble opinion he sells guy in a way it ought to be sold. In fact, we have read that most of the Caribbean is trying to adopt the principles, policies, and methodologies used in the Ghana police force as in its effort to reduce crime, the, the, the crime rate. That is what they are saying. Where are they living? Just in a short space of time, policemen, people or people dressed in uniform are said to be committing robberies. The Butas Mat is before us. Not so long ago, across the river, they said a sergeant from Vidinup was a gang ring leader in housebreaking ring, in some housebreaking ring. Sergeant of police. And those are only three in, 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 that I'm highlighted. There are so many others. So many others. This thing is this thing is mind-boggling. And for those who will jump out and say that um, there's always been corruption in the force, you're correct. There have always been allegations of corruption. But it's the magnitude when a man can, a senior officer, excuse me, can amass $800 million in assets in less than um, three years. $800 million in assets. I'm talking about Brutus. $500 million, 500 million in cash. Um, his wife is 14 year, is, sorry, is four year old um, son who has two bank accounts with 14 million, above 14 million. His wife, who established a business about um, a year ago and has bank, a bank account over $300 million. This is staggering. The magnitude of corruption is staggering. It's staggering. But <clears throat> they say monkey see, monkey do. And therefore, if the environment facilitates this type of corruption, criminal activity, what do you expect? The environment encourages it. Here it is. Gail Teixeira can write this about the force in, with all that is going on. And mind you, this letter is written on the 9th. Let me, let me get the correct date. This letter is written on the 9th of October, on the 2nd of October. On the 2nd of October, this letter is written. When all this investigation going on, Brutus being investigated for money laundering and other financial crimes. Allegation that the police across the river in um leading some housebreaking um, gang. The allegation that policemen in uniform rob the man of $10 million and guilty share can write that. That to me is an indication of how damaging the effects of nicotine can be. Very, very damaging. Very, someone who writes that has to be delusional, has to, has to be suffering from a serious mental condition. Very, very serious mental condition. Let me bring in Mr. Conway to obviously on this. You see, that two policemen charged will be charged. Um, well, they say robbery. So I know I hope when they charge the robbery, they know that the fact that they remove the CCTV um recorder, that too 
is a separate robbery apart from the money th that too is a separate robbery the abduction and that so let's see what is going to take place you have used my brother yeah you know the the best practices they're talking about is what the way the, the, the past pray about corruption racism disunity and a whole set of other things. They, 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 this is what they're talking about. And I know old girl to show you could write them kind of uh, uh, nonsense. The force is fragmented. The force there is disunity. And particularly at the top, particularly that the force is hemorrhaging. It's, it's, it's hemorrhaging. All, 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 the, all these things are happening. And, and they're pushing up the force. Or we say we'll be, be bigging up the force. No, 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 no. People living in another world, perhaps they're not, they're not living, living, living in, in, in Guyana. The pastor prayed for divine intervention, prayed for divine in, intervention a couple of years ago. And that's what the police force need, divine intervention. God got to come in here and help the, help the police force. Gail Tisher and them can't help, 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 the, help the Guyana police force. The president and them can't help, help the police force. You know. It calls for divine intervention, and I, and I say it all the time. Sherwin Elias, commonly known as Dog Wind, was on Tuesday remanded to prison for the stabbing death of 47-year-old Andre Pucci Wilson. The incident occurred during a name-calling altercation on October 28th. Elias, a farmer residing at Lot 373 Victoria Village, appeared before Magistrate Arinthia Schmidt at the Cope and John Magistrate's Court, where he was read the indictable charge of murder. He was not required to enter a plea and was subsequently remanded to prison. Elias is scheduled to return to court on November 3, 2024, for report. It was reported on Monday that Wilson died on Sunday evening after sustaining a stab wound to the abdomen. This publication understands that on the day of the incident, Wilson was with a group of men when Elias drove by in his vehicle. One of the men called out to Elias using his alias, Dog Wind, which provoked an argument. Information reaching this publication suggests that Wilson intervened as the peacemaker and attempted to mediate, explaining to Elias that the name he objected to was one he had been called for years by the villagers. However, the confrontation escalated and Elias turned his anger towards Wilson, stabbing him in the abdomen. An injured Wilson sought refuge by jumping into a nearby trench. A video circulating on social media shows villagers assisting him out of the trench and wrapping his wound with a torn t-shirts before transporting him to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, GHC, where he underwent emergency surgery. Wilson's brother informed the news that the stab wound affected both his lungs and liver. Unfortunately, due to the severity of his injuries, Wilson died on Sunday night. A row over a bicycle between two teenagers ended in tragedy this evening in Sofia when 13-year-old Kareem Durant was brutally stabbed to death. The incident occurred just before 7 p.m., and while details are sketchy, the suspect is said to be another teenager from the same community. According to family members, Durant and the other teenager were involved in an argument that quickly escalated over a bicycle. As the two teenagers started to shove each other and got involved in a fight, eyewitnesses said a younger brother of the suspect arrived at the scene with scissors, which was used to stab Durant. The injured teen was rushed to the Georgetown Hospital's emergency room, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead by doctors on duty. The dead youth's older brother, Warren Edwards, said his mother and entire family have been left in disbelief and are distraught by the incident. He said his mother has been left in a delirious state as she mourns the loss of her young son. He described his brother as a normal youth and explained that he loved football and other sporting activities. Durant was an eighth grade student of the Dolphin Secondary School. A full police investigation is underway. somewhere in Providence, this area is Providence, 
and you know it have a lot of houses so you know so the people in providence i'm doing your road okay i'm doing your fucking road and i'm gonna put my name on a dog pen here you guys gonna get it right so you know i got proper material Yes, you know the material is good you know so from that hand all the way to that hand is very very deep over there you guys know right so the job is coming now i gotta go to the gardens now you know what i'm saying you guys that looking for a job you need to send me your application your id card your tint you know what i'm saying and i'm gonna go ahead tomorrow is a holiday in this country i'm going over all application okay I'm going over all application, but it is coming good. It's coming good. It's coming very good. Hello. Good day. I see you guys, people. I'm Doggy. I'm the one responsible for your road, okay? So if there's any complaint, let me know, okay? Any complaint. All right. I'm going to make it high as possible, yeah? I'm going to make it high as possible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why did they, they scream in my name? So I'm gonna make it very high, and I'm gonna see. Hello. Hi. Oh my God. Take your time. You okay? You look very confused. You live around here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm a fan. You're a fan. Okay. What is your name? Divine Weeks. Divine Weeks. Yeah. I'm gonna call you Dividing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where you live around here? Oh, you live right here? Yeah. Well, I'm the guy that doing you guys' road. So this is one of my contracts right here. So they dig it today. I'm going to build it high. You have any complaints? No, no, no. We got open in um, a pet. A pet? Um, we are veterinarians. Oh, veterinarians. Yes. So you do animals. Yes. Can I come and get it checked out? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. Yes. You guys going to give me a shot? Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> nice. Uh, so I'll just come and check on the road, you know? But they're moving very fast. They're moving very... What area is this? Providence, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the streets, but, you know, I'm getting it. And then I got to do over there. So nice to meet you. Yes. You want to take a picture with me? Yes. Catch your phone, okay? Okay. Oh, they love me in this country. They love me. And I'm doing over here the same thing I'm doing over here, okay? I'm doing the same thing over here. They're doing a very great job. A very great job they're doing a very very great job you know yeah like i said as a young man you got to work you got to push yourself you got to stop complaining and you, you got to stop wanting you know get the fucking job done that's it it's so easy it's difficult i never believe i would walk on a road that i'm building literally i'm walking on a road that i'm building you know what i'm saying you don't have to have all the education in the world you got to get common sense and you got to get brains okay so it's coming good i'm building the road very high because as a driver, you know, you drive a certain road, the road breaking up, it cracking up. You got to spend money. I like a good job, okay? If it's not a good job, I don't want it. Literally, I don't want, I want a good job, like literally. So, you know, they did a good job, you know, it's solid. It's very solid, you know. It is very solid. Yeah, so, and it's a very long street. The street is very long, so... They dig out here, you know, this is the road. I'm building the road to the standard of this, to the standard, you know? You know, but the parpet move is very clean. Like you guys can see, it's a very long street. The streets is so long, you know. Yeah, I'm getting the job. The hard work pays off, you know what I'm saying? There's a time and there's a place. That's the one. Time and a place for everything, but you know. I'm building this street very high, you know, very high. I'm building the streets. I see a fan over there. She want to take a picture with me. She's like, oh, my God, doggy. Oh, my God. She on a vegetarian. So I said, I'm going to take a check out. As the vet, she's going to check me out. And I'm going to see her vegetarian stuff. You got you to gotta, you gotta say hi to the neighbors in the street. You got to have a relationship with people that you're working with you know you can't be a brat you can't be rude you know what i'm saying so you guys got to do a lot there's a lot i'm doing right now and i'm getting the job done you know i'm getting the job done you know but i believe in a high role you know what i'm saying 
It is very high. So I'm going to do this road. I'm going to show you guys from the starting to the ending. And I'm going to show you guys the projects, okay? But it's coming very, very good. It is coming very good. Yes. Eight butterfly sea moss powder. Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder. Essential multivitamin powder made just for you. What took place at St. Joseph High. So many other schools. Things are not reaching to your ears or to your office because the head teachers, some of them are hiding these things from you. If you go to Westminster School on the West Coast, that new school that recent uh, opened about a couple of years ago, there's some kind of stabbing, some kind of um, cuss out and fight and big fights going on. In Vreden Hoop Primary School, grade 6 girls are molesting grade 3 girls. And that is just some sum that I'm calling. And people, parents... Hi to the 2025 elections. And all of this because of Jack Deal's weekly tantrums. I caused them to have got momentum in their sale. It's just stupidity. But I suspect... He, they want they hate this weekly tantrum that I throw here. The weekly tantrum. So he wants me to end the weekly tantrum so he could continue to lie about the PVP as they did in the past. Their argument was correct. Central Welfare Fund account number so 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 L of the Republic Bank Limited to to be used for the purpose of the payment of goods supplied to the Ghana police force. A purpose other than for which monies from the Ghana Police Force Central Welfare Fund is to be used without any reasonable excuse and justification. What I say there, goods were supplied. They take the welfare money. 30 million, you get back to start to get 